In this video, we'll be looking at vector subspaces. We'll define what subspaces are, and then we'll look at some examples. In general, let's start with a vector space V. I can look at a subset of it. We'll call that subset H. If H itself satisfies the conditions of a vector space, we call H a subspace of V. In our last video on vector spaces, we learned that it's quite tedious to check all of the conditions of a vector space. Luckily, if we want to check that some subset of a vector space V is a subspace, then all we have to do is check three properties. First, we need the zero vector to be in H. Second, we need H to be closed under vector addition. This means that if I have any two vectors, u and w, in H, then their sum, u plus w, is also in H. Lastly, we need to check that H is closed under scalar multiplication. This means that for any scalar c and any vector u in H, we have that the scalar multiplication c times u is also in H. The reason why we don't have to check all of the properties like commutativity or associativity or the distributive property is because we're using the same operations as we did in V. And since we're given that V is a vector space, we know that those properties are already satisfied. So let's take a look at some examples. Let V be any vector space and let H be the subset of V containing just one element, the zero vector. Then it turns out that H is a subspace of V. Let's check the three conditions. First, is the zero vector in H? Well, the answer is yes. In fact, the zero vector is the only element in H. Condition two, is H closed under vector addition? Well, if I take any two elements in H, then is there sum in H? Well, the only element that's in H is the zero vector, and if I add the zero vector to the zero vector, I still get the zero vector, which is an element in H. So it's closed under vector addition. Next, let's check the third condition. Is H closed under scalar multiplication? If I take any C and I multiply by the zero vector, well, any scalar times the zero vector gives me the zero vector, and that, of course, is in H. So it's closed under scalar multiplication. So since the three conditions are satisfied, we can conclude that H is a subspace of V. In this next example, we have the vector space V equals R3, and H is the collection of vectors of the form A, 0, B, where A and B are real numbers. Since A and B can be anything they want, essentially H consists of three-dimensional vectors that have a zero as the middle entry. Let's check if H is a subspace of V. First condition, is the zero vector in H. The answer is yes because the zero vector has a zero as the middle entry. For the second condition, we want to check that H is closed under vector addition. Let's start with two arbitrary vectors in H. Let's call them A1, 0, B1, and A2, 0, B2. And let's take their sum. The result would be A1 plus A2, 0, and then b1 plus b2. Since the resulting vector has a zero in the middle entry, we know that the sum here is in H, which tells me that H is closed under addition. Lastly, let's check if H is closed under scalar multiplication. So let C be any scalar, and let's take an arbitrary element in H. Let's call it A zero B. The product here is C A, 0, C, B. Since the product has a 0 in the middle entry, we can conclude that it's an H, which tells me that H is closed under 
scalar multiplication. So since the three conditions are satisfied, we can conclude that H is a subspace of V, or in this case, of R3. In our next example here, we have V as the vector space of all 2 by 2 matrices. Now, we didn't talk about this as an example of a vector space in our last video. But you can check that the set of 2 by 2 matrices, along with matrix addition and matrix scaling, does form a vector space. It satisfies all of those conditions. H in this example is the collection of all singular 2 by 2 matrices. And remember, singular here just means that it's non-invertible. So what we want to do is determine if H is a subspace of V. Again, let's check our three conditions. One is the zero vector in H. For the vector space of 2 by 2 matrices, the zero vector is the matrix 0, 0, 0, 0. Because if I take any 2 by 2 matrix and I add the 0, 0, 0, 0 matrix to it, I just end up with whatever I started with. Now the question is, is this in H? Well, if I calculate the determinant of this matrix, I get 0, which means this matrix is not invertible, which means it's in H. So my first condition is satisfied. For the second condition, we want to check if H is closed under vector addition. Is the sum of two singular matrices always singular? Well, the answer to that is no. For example, if I take the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, and I add it to the matrix 0, 0, 0, 1, I get the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, the two matrices on the left are both singular because their determinants are 0. However, the matrix on the right is the identity matrix, which is non-singular. Its determinant is 1, which means it's invertible. So this tells me that H is not closed under vector addition. Since one of the conditions is not satisfied, I can conclude that H is not a subspace of V. In our next example here, V is the vector space of all polynomials, and H is the subset of V consisting of polynomials of the form A times X, where A is any real number. So basically, H consists of polynomials that are some constant times X. So let's see if H is a subspace of V. For the first condition, is the zero vector in H? Well, the zero vector in the vector space of all polynomials is just the constant zero. And zero is in H because zero can be thought of as zero times x. And since zero times x is some constant times x, we can conclude that that's in H. Okay. Second property, is H closed under vector addition? Let's say I have two arbitrary elements in H. Let's call it A1 times X as my first polynomial and A2 times X as my second polynomial. If I add these two polynomials together, I can group the constants together to get A1 plus A2 times X. A1 plus A2 is just some constant, so my result is some constant times X, which means that the sum of those two polynomials is in H. This tells me that H is closed under addition. For the third condition, I need to check that H is closed under scalar multiplication. So let C be any scalar, and let A times X be any arbitrary polynomial in H. Their product can be grouped as C times A times X. Now again, C times A is just some constant, so I have a constant times X, which means that this product is in H. This tells me that H is closed under scalar multiplication. Okay, so since all three conditions are satisfied, I can conclude that H is a subspace of V. In our next example, we have a slight variation. V is still the vector space of all polynomials, but this time H consists of polynomials of the form AX plus 3. Let's check if H is a subspace of V. Our first condition, 1, is the zero vector in H. Well, again, the zero vector in the vector space of all polynomials is just a constant zero. 
notice that no matter what I choose for this a here, I'm always going to be left with this constant 3. So there's no way for me to get just the constant 0. This tells me that the 0 vector is not in H, which means that I have to conclude that H is not a subspace of V. In this last example, we are looking at the vector space of all points on the xy plane. And h is the subset of points where the first coordinate is greater than or equal to 0, and the second coordinate is less than or equal to 0. Let's check if h is a subspace of v. Our first condition asks if the 0 vector is in h. The 0 vector in the vector space of all points on the xy plane is the origin, 0, 0. And that is in H because the first coordinate is greater than or equal to 0, and the second coordinate is less than or equal to 0. Our second condition to check is that H is closed under vector addition. So let's take two arbitrary points in H. Let's call it x1, y1 and x2, y2. And since these two points are in H, I know that x1 and x2 are both greater than or equal to 0, y1 and y2 are both less than or equal to 0. If I add these two points, I end up with x1 plus x2 as the first coordinate, y1 plus y2 as the second coordinate. Now since x1 and x2 are both greater than or equal to 0, I know that the first coordinate here is also greater than or equal to 0. Since y1 and y2 are both less than or equal to 0, their sum is going to be less than or equal to 0. So my sum here is going to be in h. That tells me that H is closed under vector addition. For our third condition, we want to check if H is closed under scalar multiplication. Well, it turns out the answer to that is no. For example, the point 1, negative 1 is in H. If I do the scalar multiplication, negative 2 times my point 1, negative 1, I end up with the point negative 2, positive 2, which has a negative first coordinate and a positive second coordinate, so this point is not in H. This tells me that H is not closed under scalar multiplication. So I must conclude that H is not a subspace of V. That's where I'll stop for this video. In my next video, I'll talk about spans of vectors and subspaces.